Good morning, you guys. I'm sitting here in this weird orangey light from my car because it's still dark outside here in Utah Saturday morning. And I'm sharing this because I hear all a lot, like when people will see like my muscles or whatever that I'm into fitness, I will often get this comment of, wow, that must be a lot of hard work. You must be really disciplined. Man, I, you know, I got to get back to the gym. Like I just, I suck with the discipline. And when people tell me that, like, oh, that must be a lot of hard work. I, I like, I don't know how to relate. I'm like, well, I mean, what? <laughs> it doesn't feel like a lot of hard work. I, I, I'm doing what I love every day. And this is just a result of that. And, and people will say, well, like, how do you get to a point where you just love it? You love going into the gym. Like, I don't love it. And this is something I um, get, dig into with my clients and hire. It's like, well, why don't you love it? What is it about it that you don't love? Because I'm telling you, if anything in your life is like this, like daunting, heavy weight burden of like, I should be doing that and I'm failing because I'm not and I don't want to, but I do it out of sheer discipline and obligation. Like you're never going to stick with something like that. We're never going to continue to sustain something that we hate. And so for me, I think it's really, really important with fitness, training, physical exercise to find your groove in a way that you love. Like, for example, I have one client right now that he just kept not going to the gym. And I was like, this is weird because I know that you like training. Like, he's already pretty fit. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, I used to go to this group training that I loved. It's kind of like a break off of CrossFit, a little bit more functional training. And I'm like, screw it. Let's have you go back to that. Like he just enjoys the camaraderie, the experience. He gets to kind of like show off in front of other people and it's fun and he gets all these wins out of it. Guess who's getting in there every single time now he is. So he found his groove. Now for me, for, for me, I have a lot of wins built into the gym. First of all, sorry, bad connection. First of all, music. Gosh, dang it. Okay. I turned off my Wi-Fi. It's like trying to connect in there. Um, I, I build as many wins into something that I want to be doing and, so, and rewards into something I want to be doing as many wins as possible. First of all, my music, I save my favorite music for when I'm in there. I don't listen to that playlist at any other time except when I'm in the gym. So as soon as I get in there, I'm like, oh yeah, baby. Okay. Second of all, I train in a way that I love. Okay. So I do, if, <laughs> if anybody lives here in Utah and sees me, it's like, you know, that Tara loves the freaking turf. I love it. I love doing sprints, ladder drills, ball slams, battle ropes, that kind of workout gets me super excited. So I do it often. I do a lot of agility, speed, um, power workouts. Now I also love weightlifting and that is one thing that came over time. But if I'm going in there, I'll be honest with you. If I'm going in there and I'm like, was planning on doing legs and it sounds like I want to just like die if I do legs today. I don't do it. I do something else. I'm like, you know what? A back workout sounds freaking awesome. So I make sure that it's fun and enjoyable and an experience that I'm looking forward to coming back to the next day. Right. Se then another aspect of this is a lot of the training that I do is because I love how I feel the rest of the day. So I'm using it to get into flow state. I get a ton of inspiration. I do use caffeinated pre-workout. I know some people don't. I freaking love it. So I'm basically like on drugs, <laughs> right? Caffeine is a drug. So I've got this huge mood booster. My dopamine and adrenaline are going up anyway from the workouts. I'm doing something I love. I've got music I love going on. I'm having a blast in there. And so it's something I look forward to. And so I love to share that with people people because if you hate it in there all the time, you're not going to want to go back. So finding your groove of things that make the experience enjoyable to you and training is huge. You're not going to be consistent with something you hate. Um, do I crash by 3 PM? I don't, I don't crash by 3 PM. You know, I think a lot of the reason I don't crash in the afternoon is because I've gone through a phase of keto and I've gotten that, um, my, my blood sugar is management is super good. So I don't have these like highs and lows. Like I can go all day long. So I think that is a gift that comes by doing a, a phase of the ketogenic diet. I also don't eat a lot of crappy foods, which can lead to those feelings of those late afternoon crashes, right? Like if I'm going to have a treat, I'll have like a Built Bar or Lily's Chocolate or something like that that isn't loaded with sugar so I don't get this high and low crash, right? I, that, I don't experience that anymore. I, it's awesome. You don't have to live like that. 
That is one of the gifts of um, excellent blood, sh blood sugar management. Um, another thing. Um, so my son has a football game at nine today and then I've got plans af right after that. So like I got my ass up early this morning. I got up at five o'clock this morning on a Saturday because I was like, I'm looking at my day and I'm like, I want to get my workout in, right? I will, I will push other things aside to make sure that I can because of that mood boost that I get. I am like on level 10 billion all day when I can get in and get, get that cranky and get in flow state. I get all these epiphanies for work and relationships. So it is, if you guys haven't read, um, Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. Oh my God. And Jamie Wheel. That book is so good. And they talk about the chemicals that inside of us that create flow state. And guess how you can get them? In there. So for me, it's this huge win because I'm basically going in there as a, as a mood booster. It sets me off on, on a trajectory for the whole day where I'm like up here. It's an experience I love doing. I don't want to miss it right? Um, and work. I, I do not, you will not get me early morning for anything. I mean, maybe if like freaking, if, if Wim Hof wanted an interview with me at 7 30 AM, sure. <laughs> but it's gotta be something like that. Otherwise I don't start any of my work stuff until 11. I've set that boundary for me because I want to have time to do my meditation, my morning routine, get over to the gym, get my stuff done, shower, get some things done. And then I go into that grind, you know, and like today it's, I'm going in mom mode. I'm going to football game, taking my son to the amusement park. So it's going to be mom mode all day. I reserve this time for me. Why? Because I get so much out of it. I love it. So, um, a lot of times with like training and eating, hold on. Oh, I got to start my car. You guys can kind of see me. Hi. <laughs> um, like I, I hear this, this obligation, right? It's like, I should eat healthy. I should, I, I should go work out. I know if it's that energy who that sucks. Like, I don't want to do anything in my life. That's like, yeah, I, I better do that. I got to, it's, it's this big burden. So when you find joy in it, find things that are healthy to eat that you love and look forward to or workouts that you love doing and get you lit up or an environment. Maybe you don't like your gym. Maybe you work out at home and you don't like working out at home. I hate working out at home. I would rather walk. I'll just go. I'm like during the shutdown, I was like, mm, I am not doing burpees on my carpet. Ugh. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I don't choose to do things in my life that I hate doing and don't look forward to. I'm like, what can I do instead? So maybe it's your gym environment. Maybe it's the type of workouts you're doing. That's part of the reason I like the neurotyping system that I do. Um, that I just had an interview with Christian Thibodeau on my podcast, Inside Out Health. If you didn't hear that interview, Thanks, truck. <laughs> with um, with Christian Thibodeau, highly recommend. That is like, um, it's basically I train my clients based off of their neurochemistry, and that impacts their personality and types of training that they will like. And so I know mine, and I know what gets me driven in there, and I focus on that. So, like, find ways. If it's something you want in your life, like you want a healthier body, find things you like to eat and ways to train that you love doing that keep you hungry, that keep you coming back for more, right? Because if it's this big obligation and it sucks, I wouldn't stay with that either. I wouldn't. Like if I don't like Pilates, for example, it's just not my jam. It's cool. I mean, it's hard, like respect, but it's just like, I just don't enjoy it. I don't look forward to it. And so if I was trying to have this rigid Monday, Wednesday, Friday Pilates schedule, guess who'd be skipping it all the time? Me, because I don't like it. Right? So it's like, we don't have to do the things and training and fitness and nutrition that we don't like. You know, that's part of the reason I'm not keto anymore. I don't really like fatty foods, right? I, I'm glad I did that for my metabolism, but it's not enjoyable for me. So and, and I frankly don't need to anymore, which is, I'm explaining in my book, Short-Term Keto, that's coming out. I don't think a lot of people need to do keto forever, obviously. Hopefully you guys know that uh, <laughs> stance of mine by now. But find ways to make your healthy lifestyle something that you look forward to and you will get up at 5 o'clock on a Saturday morning to go do it because you love it so much. Right? There's so many different ways. There's so many different ways to skin a cat. So many different venue. So explore, find your groove, find your jam, build rewards into it, like cool music or pre-workout that gets you going or fun. You know, I love my gym clothes because they're super comfortable, 
<laughs> right? And they're cute. And I like wearing them. And I got my cool Nikes and my Vivo Barefoots and all my things that I love wearing, you know? Like, all I'm building in as many wins as I can. I like this gym. This one, it's a brand new gym. It's huge. It's got an awesome functional area. I like the energy in it. All, everything. I like, it's everything about this I'm looking forward to. Enough that I will get up be self-motivated enough to get up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday to go do it because I don't want to miss it, you know, and that's the place that we want to get to. Um, let's see. I didn't know this. You carb cycle now Mediterranean. I'm sure it's in your book. Yeah, that's, this is what my book is. Uh, and I'm showing you guys my DEXA scans from when I was keto to when I went off keto and <laughs> that's in the intro will probably make you not want to do keto when you read that. But I'm um, the first chapter is why I I'm so grateful that I did keto and what that does for your metabolism and your body. Cause it's a gift. It is. It's a gift that helps your metabolism run at full tilt. Like I can, I intermittent fast now to like, I don't know. Some days I might start eating as early as 11. Some days, honestly, I'm, I don't eat till like two, three. It doesn't matter. Like I'm not dependent on food for like good mood and energy. So I can intermittent fast for quite a while. And I wasn't like that before keto. It was like, okay, when can I have a protein bar or something? You know? Um, so now, um, I basically, yeah, I still eat somewhat low carbish. Um, most days I'd say, yeah, like I'm going to opt for vegetables and proteins and things like that. And like add in some carbs and fats. Um, but I'm showing you in the book, like how you can slowly reintroduce carbohydrates and match your training to that, to start getting more in that muscle building mode. I'm also talking about things like serotonin and dopamine and GABA and how our neurochemicals are impacted by the way we eat. Um, and why I think some people, um, may not want to do keto forever based off of that reason too. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. I talk about healthiest populations in the world. Guess what they all eat? carbohydrates. Okinawa is one of my favorite ones to share. Blue Zone, the traditional Okinawan diet. So they, the Okinawa, they have the largest amount of centenarians in the history of the world that we have documented, right? So people who have lived to a hundred or older, the traditional Okinawan diet is 85% carbohydrates. 85, <laughs> 85. So just dropping that right there. And I go into all that stuff in the book. So, um, a lot of what we're doing with keto is fixing what overeating and processed foods did, right? So this dependence that we have on food where we need a snack, we need, you know, our energy drops and our blood sugar freaks out and we get moody and cranky and we're road raging and yelling at our families. Like that's not normal. We, you don't have to live like that anymore. So a phase of keto can really help with that. Um, as long as people stay away from sugar. Yeah, I'm actually like not as sugar opposed as like probably most people in my community. Um, I definitely avoid it most of the time. I do, it does kind of bring me into that, like not as optimal brain state. And that's really important to me right now, especially with all the projects I'm creating. Like I want to be on like up here, but I still eat sugar. Sometimes I personally don't find it to be addictive and I would, I find restrictive mindsets to create food addictions personally. So I don't like to have any restrictions in my mind around food. If I really want some chocolate covered almonds, go for it. And I, I swear like having that mentality has made me eat way less of those things. So, um, rice is not the devil. <laughs> yeah. Rice is not the devil. So China, this is something I share in the book as well. China eats more rice than anybody in the world. The obesity rate in China, and a lot of it is white rice, by the way, the obesity rate in China is five to 6%. And the only reason it's that high is because, um, in areas where they have a lot of American fast food, it's 20 to 30%. So it's like an inflated number. So they'd be like, you know, less than 5% obesity rate eating more rice than anybody in the world. Yet we want to sit here and point the finger at rice. Like it's this bad food. It's like, dude, it's not rice. <laughs> it's processed foods and overeating and lack of physical activity causing the problems. So yeah, I've changed. Yeah, I changed a long time ago. I have not been full keto since 20, when was it? End of 2017. So yeah. Um, let's see. Are you opposed to the carnivore diet? I'm not, I am not opposed to the carnivore diet. 
I um, have used the carnivore diet with a few clients strategically. Um, the reasons that I would use the carnivore diet, I mean, the main reason would be severe gut issues where just everything, there's this huge like um, microbial or bacterial imbalance, SIBO, um, histamine reactions, something going on in the gut where it's just like the gut is freaking out no matter what you eat. I think carnivore is a super smart intervention for healing the gut because you get this huge rush of ketones, your brain powers at full tilt, you're giving space for your gut, gut to heal. I don't I definitely don't see carnivore as a long-term solution except for some people. If I've had some people on carnivore, they're like, I just prefer it, honestly. Like, I love meat. Like, I, I like this lifestyle. It's easy for me. I feel great. I'm like, go for it then. Like, of course. Um, the issues I have with carnivore is it's tricky reintroducing fibers like you have to be very slow and careful so a lot of people like after doing a phase of carnivore it's tough for them to get back into a normal place so it has to be very mindful you have to be very pay a lot of attention to what you're eating start small like i'm talking like a little bit of cooked um vegetables a little bit of avocado like really slowly reintroducing those um fibers and carbohydrates after a carnivore phase what was my diet when I was recently training for the competition? Yeah, it was just your typical competition. I, I went full in. I just went into robot mode, whatever my coach says, because that was the purpose of the exper experiment was to see what it's like for people who go through a bodybuilding competition. So it was your typical like high protein, low carb and low fat. <laughs> That's what they do. So yeah, if you just eat protein, you'll lose weight really fast, but you also lose brain power and cause hormone dysfunction if you do that for too long. So yeah, uh, but I am still a fan of higher protein diets, especially if you're training, because you'll use that protein to help rebuild the muscles that you just tore down for that repair. And yeah, protein is the macronutrient that's least likely to be stored as body fat. So if you're eating more of it, you stay satiated. Um, it helps you make um, neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin. So you, your mood starts getting boosted and you know you're building muscle with it and losing body fat because a lot of your calories are going to, towards protein you know um and it's also the um macronutrient that keeps you full for the longest amount of time so in the research we found that carbs create the highest satiety like immediately um because of the blood sugar boost and then um protein keeps you full as longest, full as longest. And when you pair fat with that, it keeps you full for a long time. So ideally, really, truly like having part, uh, protein, fat and carbs all in the same meal will lead to the greatest satiety for the longest amount of time. If you want to lose body fat, a really easy way to do that is like leaner proteins, a lot of fiber, if your gut can handle it, like fibrous vegetables and add some fat, add some coconut oil, cook it in olive oil, add some um, guacamole, but that's for most people like the ticket. If you eat a lot of unprocessed whole foods and you eat all three micronutrients in each meal, you're going to be sitting pretty. Um, I find pairing that with intermittent fasting is a really easy lifestyle. So protein and fiber are things that I really emphasize with my clients. I do have some clients on keto. Um, it is, it, I would say like the more body fat you have and the more sedentary you are, the more keto is going to work for you. And if you have high blood sugar, it's just, it's the fast track to, to getting that back to a good place, especially when paired with berberine, which is basically like the plant form of metformin. So it really helps with blood sugar stabilization. So yeah, I still use keto. Um, definitely. It's a really powerful tool that I have in my tool belt, but only when necessary. Um, because I don't like restrictive mindsets around food. I do not like what that does to people. So if you can be in a healthy mind space of like, I'm doing something cool for my body with keto, you know, it's not like carbs are bad and I'm a bad person if I eat carbs. Like if we're trickling into that, like there's deeper issues that need to be addressed there. But if you can look at it as a proactive thing where like I'm training my metabolism to run off of fat and then I can have really healthy blood sugar regulation and it's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. I'm a huge fan of it, obviously. Um, let's see. I noticed that when I was running five kilometers on keto, I could never improve my time. Maybe I'm a carb burner, not fat. I just couldn't run faster than the last time. Yeah. So, um, I can speak on this cause I ran the Boston marathon in ketosis and trained for the whole thing in ketosis. So, um, keto does really well with low intensity exercise. So for like, I've had ultra marathoner clients, they love keto. I mean, it's because they're running off fat oxidation. When you're at that lo those lower intensities, you are running off of fat. 
regardless of whether you're keto or not, I mean, you use carbs too, but you are prioritizing fat oxidation in that state. If you're hitting pedal to the metal, like I do, like I truly do run a full 26 mile marathon, like pedal to the metal. <laughs> I can sustain fast for a long period of time. You can probably beat me in a sprint, but I will beat you at most people in a marathon. <laughs> um, and that's glycolytic. That's running off glycolysis. So if you're trying to run that 5k pedal to the metal in keto, you are not going to have the juice that you would have if you had carbohydrates, right? So it's knowing when it's not like keto is bad and sucks or carbs are better or carbs are bad. It's not that it's like, what are you trying to do? And what's the most intelligent approach to get that done? Um, also, if your electrolytes are imbalanced, oh my, you were going to bonk. That's like recipe for disaster. How did I run a marathon on keto? Um, so, well, actually what happened was I ran the Boston and I didn't, I was like, didn't check. I didn't realize you couldn't have camel packs at the Boston Marathon because of the bombings that happened. So I had um, a ton of ketones and electrolytes like in a camel pack for me. And they were like, no, you can't bring that right when I was getting on the bus to go to the starting line. So I was like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I'm like at a one point something in ketosis. I'm like, Oh my God. So I had to run that sucker with just the Gatorade that they had. And it was not enough salt, not enough electrolytes. So it was honestly one of the hardest experiences of my whole life. Like I had, um, accepted that I was going to be one of those people that pass out on the course. Like I was blacking out, uh, my, I, I definitely got dehydrated. My legs felt like they were going to explode out of my skin. I was crying. <laughs> I'm not like a super emotional person, but yeah, I was like, it was brutal. It was extremely painful. Um, so definitely recommend if you're going to run anything in ketosis, you need salt. So like, I was like, why didn't I bring salt pills or something I can have on me? Um, but yeah, you can definitely run a marathon in ketosis and many people do, um, uh, especially ultra marathoners. Um, also if you're not very adapted to keto and you try to run something, it's going to be a disaster. The, the longer you're adapted, the more your body spares glycogen and you can run it like further, longer in ketosis. So, um, yeah, may, so if you, yeah, if you're feeling like keto isn't for you, it might not be, it is not a, a long term fit for everybody. It wasn't for me. So I share in the intro to my book. I mean, I was really lean, super lean, probably too lean when I started keto. I didn't realize I was that lean. When I get really lean, I don't feel like I look as lean as other people. So I was 11% body fat when I started keto. Jumped up to 18% body fat while I was on keto. Um, I wanted to be more like 14, 15 because I really love how I feel and I'm fast and energetic around that 14, 15% body fat. Couldn't get there on keto. No matter what I did, I could not get there. As um, soon as I reintroduced carbohydrates, I dropped back down to 12, changing nothing but just eating carbs <laughs> again. So, um, you know, you got to be real with yourself about what you feel best at. All right. It's like there's so many voices. There's so, you know, even everything I'm saying, like, take it with a grain of salt, like see what works for you. Try things out. I do recommend staying keto for at least at least four weeks. Cause you don't, you, it takes a while for your body to adapt to running off a of ketone. So if you try keto for three days, you're, everyone's going to think keto sucks. <laughs> okay. It takes a while for your, your uh, muscles and your organs, everything to start adapting to running off those ketones. So give it four weeks. If it's not a lifestyle fit for you, you at least really enhanced your body's ability to run off fat for fuel. And you get that gift I mentioned in the er beginning of this video of three o'clock comes around. I don't know what it feels like anymore to go low energy in the afternoon. That's not part of my life anymore. I'm super insulin sensitive. Um, my body runs really well off of carbs too. And I'm very intuitive with how I eat. If I, if carbs sound gross, I'm not eating them that day or maybe very little, if I'm like really, really, really wanting carbohydrates, I'm going to eat healthy carbohydrates. And that has just been an awesome flow for me. So it's something you earn, I think, intuitive eating as you get more in touch with your body. Um, you know, a, a few days ago, like I was not hungry. I like hardly ate anything. And then I have other days where I'm super hungry and I just flow, you know. So when you eat well and you train hard and your body's healthy and your mind is healthy and you're not stress eating and you've gotten past those things. Like you can be very intuitive with your body and it's beautiful. There's no restrictions, you know, it doesn't have to be this regimented thing, but it's something that you earn, you know? So, um, I had so many Charlie horses when I started keto, 
Electrolytes are essential and magnesium. Yeah, that sounds like a potassium deficiency, which can happen super fast on keto. Um, and I recommend for everybody, um, hopefully you guys know I'm a huge fan of upgraded formulas, hair mineral analysis. So if you go to the link in my bio on my website, there's a discount link. Actually, I need to update it. It's 15% off now. So if you want to find out like your mineral ratios, which it impacts your hormones, your metabolism, your mental health, mood, all of that, um, you can do a test and a consult with them. It's like $200, but with my coupon, it's 15% off. So inside out 15 at upgradedformulas.com gets you that discount plus any minerals you might need for them and that from them. And they're all nanoparticle size, which means they're like one ten thousandth the size of the cells. So they the absorption is like complete. I mean, I think legally they can say like 99.9%, .9%, but come on, like it's, it, they're so small. Um, they really help me fix a magnesium deficiency that I had. So super, super good stuff, um, which then helped me get more REM sleep. I started dreaming again. Anxiety went down. Like it's cool. A lot of your, uh, mood and mental health is internal health. It's not like you're just a grumpy person. It's generally something's off in your minerals or your blood, or maybe you have gut issues. It's a neurotransmitter thing, but mental health is just physical health. It's part of your body. You know, and of course there is a, an aspect of training your mind and learning how to let go of stressful thoughts and, um, having, um, the space between stimulus and response. You can, you know, not just get emotionally reactive of everything, but a lot of it is physical health. So it's good to check in on the inside of your body. You know, it's like having a car for how long have you had your car? If your body's a car, 20, 30, 40, 50 year old car, you're never checking on anything inside to make sure it's running. Okay. Come on. <laughs> stuff's going to start breaking down. So it's like, let's have enough self-love to get some blood work done every once in a while, check our mineral status. Um, you know, find out what your blood sugar is. You don't want to find out you have diabetes. Like, do you have high blood sugar? Do you know? Cause guess what? If you do, you know what high blood pressure, also, blood sugar also causes like depressive like symptoms because your dopamine goes down. So you don't, you just don't have that drive in life. So it's like, find out a lot of, if you're having negative experiences in your mindset or, you know, your mood or your energy levels, find out what's going on inside. Cause it could just be a very simple fix. So anyway, it's light outside now. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go crush it and go to my son's football game. But yeah, I just want to share that. Um, going back to the original message is just if, if, if working out and eating healthy has become this big burden and this thing that you hate and it sucks all the time, shift, shift, find it, explore a new way to work out, get a new environment, get some cool music, get some cool workout clothes, like find a buddy or go to a class or something, you know, don't get, try boxing or MMA or jujitsu or whatever it is. Something you're like, I can't wait. I can't wait till Friday when I get to go. Right. Or eating healthy. Like I don't want to eat something I hate either. So I have like my go-tos. I'm like, I can't wait to eat that spaghetti squash spaghetti thing with the turkey, ground turkey. It's so yummy. You know what I mean? Like keep looking for things that like make you look forward to your healthy lifestyle. And then it's like, it becomes a want to and not a have to and should and burden. Like no one's going to sustain that. Okay. So keep exploring so many different ways. I'm telling you intuitively, if it lights up your soul, if you're like, Ooh, yes. There we go. Now we're on the right track. Okay. So let's remove all the shame and stigma of like, Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many things guys. It's like, I love garbanzo beans and it's like, Oh, those are really high and they're super contaminated and you shouldn't eat. I'm like, I don't know. I I'm still eating garbanzo beans. My body craves them. I love them. I get the organic ones. I'm going for it. I soak them, cook them in my crock. By the way, you can just literally just buy at Whole Foods organic garbanzo beans, dry, put them in your crock pot with some water, salt, turn it on, walk away. <laughs> so good. And then they like, they soak. And so that helps them open up and release all their nutrients. But yeah, like find your groove, find things you love, remove all these voices of like, this is how you should do it in the right way. You know, check in on your body, get good information, but then pull the power back into you. And it's like, what do I love? What do I look forward to? And that will keep you going, driving towards your goals in a way that's like, I want to do this. I want to eat that. I want to go there. I want to train that way. Yeah. All right. Time to go crush it. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Have a great weekend.